Hi, this video is all about a particular and slightly peculiar feature that we can find in igneous rock called xenoliths and the related idea of enclaves. Now the word itself comes from Greek, xenos and lithos. Xenos meaning foreign and lithos meaning rock. It's the same root that we get words like xenophobia from. What it means is that this is a rock within uh, an igneous rock that doesn't fit, that looks noticeably different from the igneous rock in which it's found. This is an example. The photograph you're looking at is of a xenolith of a peridotite. You can see just how much olivine there is within this, um, this fragment of rock that's surrounded by the finer grained, darker basalt. And these are fairly typical of rocks that you can find in Hawaii. Now, rocks like this can tell us a lot about the history of the magma. This one in particular is a fragment of um, mantle rock from much deeper uh, within the earth that's been ripped up by the magma as it's making its way towards the surface and has remained largely unchanged as it gets towards the surface and erupts. We can see that this is much more mafic than the surrounding rock. We can also see that this rock is much coarser grained uh, than the basalt in which it's found, telling us it was formed slowly and at great depth. So it gives us a little clue about the composition of the deeper earth. If we look at this in thin section, this particular slide shows us um, what we've seen uh, in the field uh, photograph before. On the right hand side there we can see the very fine grain basalt. On the left hand side uh, this xenolith of principally very bright coloured uh, olivine uh, and the sort of the grey and the brown um, part, the grey and brown crystals within this which are uh, augite. We can see that there's a clear difference between the rocks. And notice as well a very sharp edge uh, to the xenolith of peridotite. Okay. This process of magma rising to the surface we call stoking. You might be familiar with this diagram from work you've already done uh, in year 12. Here we can see the magma rising because it's buoyant, it's less dense than the surrounding rock, it's under pressure from the gas that's dissolved in it, and as a result it will force its way up, pushing its way uh, into weaknesses uh, in the country rock, which is just the surrounding rock into which this magma is being intruded, and breaking away fragments of that country rock. We can see evidence of this within um, exposures that we can find. We also need to think about how this changes the magma, how the magma evolves as a result of this process. This is a photograph of some um, of a granite outcrop in Canada showing examples of mafic xenoliths. These xenoliths have clearly fallen into um, the granite and really perhaps haven't been changed uh, a very great deal by uh, being incorporated into the magma. We can see how the magma's pushing its way into cracks within it, uh, within the xenoliths, but these xenoliths really haven't changed shape very much. They're quite angular, they're quite um, um, but they look like they've been broken off from the country rock. There are some magmas, though, where we see uh, 
how these uh, individual bits of rock must have changed the composition of the magma uh, that's intruded them. It's fairly uh, common, like we can see with this particular granite, that there's a far more mafic uh, composition than the surrounding rock. Now remember, mafic mi minerals melt at a much higher temperature than silicic ones. So perhaps, perhaps, the silicic minerals within the country rock have melted. They've become incorporated into uh, the magma, changing its composition on the way. And what we're seeing here is just the remnants, the mafic material that doesn't really melt. But that's got to have an effect on the surrounding magma. If the lower temperature, more silicic minerals are melting out of the country rock and out of these xenoliths, perhaps the magma itself then becomes more silicic the more it stopes its way through the crust, changes its composition. There are some of these uh, xenoliths where we can see crystals that have grown. This is an example of shap granite, what, a, a rock we're going to study in some more detail later. And here you can see uh, a mafic uh, part of this granite, a much darker part. This one, though, has perhaps slightly sort of softer edges, and we can see very distinct um, phenocrysts of orthoclase feldspar that have grown within this. This really must have been a liquid. It must have been um, magma injected into uh, the granite. Perhaps uh, some mafic magma giving it extra heat and extra input of energy. And then as it's cooled and crystallized, perhaps quenched by the, the magma, we see the growth of um, orthoclase feldspar as the magma itself uh, incorporates into this um, new material. This is something we call an enclave. I want to finish off by looking at uh, an outcrop from uh, a granite called the Ardurar granite in Donegal. This is, as you can see from the photo, a relatively silicic rock, quite light in colour. And it has some very distinctive xenoliths. What do you think this xenolith shows us about the granite? I'm going to take your photograph with your observations. If we zoom in on a small part of the xenolith, we actually get a bit more detail. Look at the texture of the, the granite. Also look at the texture of the xenolith. What can you actually see going on within the xenolith? What's that telling us about how this forms? What can we see just below the pencil there, cutting across the zenith? Again, what's that telling us? Annotate your photograph and see if you can come up with an interesting question, perhaps specifically about this particular zenith. So, we can see, xenoliths give us crucial information about not only the deep earth, but also how the magma changes and evolves as it makes its way towards the surface. It perhaps can start to explain for us some of the igneous compositions that we find in rocks at the surface that perhaps we wouldn't have expected from the composition of the magma that would have been created uh, at the plate tecton tectonic setting where they were made. Anyway, make sure you come up with your interesting question uh, to bring to class, and I'll see you there.